guys, back here with another video for you. I've got a truck I'm really excited to share with you. It's actually my friend Alex uh, and Morgan. They own this vehicle and they've let me have some time with it so that I can share it with you. As you can see behind me, we're here at beautiful Guard of the Gods, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we got Pikes Peak snow cap behind us. But right here, you can see behind me, I've got a 2023 Chevy Silverado Trail Boss, and we're gonna bring it to you. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so here, here we go. This is the 2023 Chevy Silverado Trail Boss. This one comes in the sand dune metallic paint. And something that I really like about this truck, it's got the three liter LZO Duramax motor powering it. That motor comes with 305 horsepower, 495 foot pounds of torque, and it's a uh, as my friend Alex Les Barlis is going to tell us, I think it's just been a, a great buy for him. It's been a, a gets good mileage, has really good low end torque, and a, a pleasure to drive. So let's walk around this thing. As you can see, part of this package, everything, all the chrome's been deleted except for one place I can see chrome. Our the Chevy emblem has it around it, and the Duramax badge. Otherwise, for the most part, and I guess around that, that Z71, but for the most part, everything's been blacked out on this. The grill's been blacked out. It looks really nice. It's got the full LED headlights and taillights. You got your red recovery points on the front of this truck. Part of the package that you get with the Trail Boss is it comes from the factory with a two inch lift, which you can tell when you put this next to a, a regular Silverado, you can definitely tell that it sits a little bit higher. This one, you can see part of that package for the Trail Boss, you get that off-road step that's lined in a spray bed liner. And then under here you get, you get some Rancho shocks, which are really nice. It gives you a really smooth drive, blacked out wheels, Z71 badge. As we said, all the trim on this is blacked out around the windows, the mirrors. Coming to the back, we can see the original Chevy step corner steps. Everyone else is starting to, to copy that now, but um, very functional. You can make your own decision as to whether you think it, it's a aesthetically pleasing, but I think they're very functional, especially for a short guy like myself. This one is the LT model, or trim rather. Um, so you'll, you'll see that there are LTZs, uh, there's a few other packages that come with some more features, but this one honestly is pretty well um, appointed. Back here, you got your four and seven pin trailer wiring harness, your hookup points. The, these are a little bit, a little bit small. Uh, my trailer, it would be a little tough to get the, the big claws in there, but a lot of people put you know, a D-ring or something on there to give you a little more access. Um, you do have this back here. This one comes with, let me get you a little better view. Has a little bit of a side um, anchor point as well. So you got a couple options, but, um, sorry, a couple options, but it would be nice to have a little bit bigger um, place to grab that there. Dual exhaust tips. This does not have a power up and down tailgate but it does have a dampened tailgate which is nice for lowering it also makes it really easy to put up and down with one hand as you can tell this one's been uh, lined on the bed you've got bed lights good attachment points throughout the bed here and then you've got a power outlet this is a 120 volt it's got a 400 watt max 
output outlet, hooking up little things um, for your tailgate party or whatnot, or at the work site. It's been nice. I like that people are start that the manufacturers starting to add those um, outlets into the beds on these trucks because it's really helpful when you go to to do work or camping or tailgating like we talked about. Let's get a look at those rear Rancho shocks. It's a very aggressive looking truck. That sand dune metallic paint is, it pops in the sun. This one they've, they've put the PPF on the front end over the hood, um, help protect from the rocks and what not coming up onto it but they've also you'll notice they you may be able to see they they tinted the windows and them did a, a top tint on the windshield overall i think it's a really clean looking truck um, not just clean from dirt but i think it has good lines it's a pretty truck it rides really nice as we'll talk about when we go for a drive um, being that it has the duramax you can see You've got the engine block heater point right here to hook up so you can do some, get my big old fingers out of the way, hook up your motor in the winter. And then this one does come with, you can even see they're shut, the active shutters on the grill for uh, when it's really cold like it is today, it's freezing. So that's a walk around. Let's get a look at the inside of this truck and show you what it's like to, to ride on the inside. Let's get a look on the inside of this truck. Got all your window controls here. It's an auto driver. The rest are not auto. You got your mirror control, lock, unlock. This one does not have memory seats, but that is an option on the higher trims. Coming in, these cabs anymore on these half tons are massive. You got so much space. You've got seat controls, lumbar control over here. You've got an electronic parking brake. All your four wheel drive and trailer tow modes come here. And then you've got your headlight controls, bed lights, and then your controls for your, your brightness on your screen here in this, uh, in the cab stocks this wheels turned so we're gonna i'll try to i'll show a, i'll throw a picture up here of the the wheel when it's not turned but you've got your controls for your uh, cruise control and then you've got your controls for your phone and voice i think the keys in here will turn the power on get you a look at the animation as it starts up This one comes with, I'll correct it if I'm wrong, I think it's a 12.3 inch driver screen and I think it was a 13.4 inch entertainment screen. In 2023, that was one of the biggest changes you saw in these Silverados. And we're gonna get it, let's stop the beeping. There we go. That was one of the biggest changes was the interior dash layout on these trucks. They went from the, the small screen to this massive entertainment screen in front of you, and it's been a really quality change. Hopping up into this truck, we got um, electronic shifter. You got your trailer brake controller here, home screen. I'll just shut the door so that we can get a we can get rid of the beeping and here you can see the, the startup screen again. It's pretty cool. Do all these cool animations now. There is a fair amount of piano black on this part of your your dash, but um, this is like a fake wood trim here. And then you've got your controls, your auto starts start and stop. You can put the tailgate down from inside. Emergencies, hill control descent, um, traction control. This has heated seats. You can do either just your back or you can do upper and lower on the heated seats on both driver and passenger seats. All your climate controls here. It's nice, it's got these big knobs. You get the, the light up here of the temperature. 
Let's see if we can start this thing up real quick. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see that it's got the temperature for both dual zone uh, temperatures, passenger and driver. You can do it on auto and then whatever. But let's look at this screen. This is really, um, there's a lot of reflections, so I apologize, but this is really where the big changes for 2023 came into play is in this center entertainment screen. Um, ooh, I can feel the heated steering wheel. It's nice. You've got your trailer controls, right? You can hook up your trailer test, do a trailer uh, light check. Let's see what we got here. Well, it's for pairing your phone. Here's all your HVAC controls, I believe. So all the physical controls can also get a lot of those controls here in the dash as well. You got cameras. This one doesn't appear to have a surround view camera, but you got um, your trailer, this line back you up to your trailer and then just your general backup controls. And then your uh, general home screen. So you've got audio controls, um, you've got maps. So it's got a good map, Google map. You can also, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well, but very responsive screen. It's beautiful view. You've got a good clean view of the map that you're, of where you're driving. Sorry, I'm keep filming high. Phone settings again. I don't think there's any other cameras to view. Google Assistant built into it. The trailer I climb it. Uh, you can have a Wi-Fi hotspot if you pay for it. And then Spotify, some other apps that you can have on here. Uh, Amazon Alexa. So really nice entertainment center, infotainment rather. This one doesn't have the camera rear view mirror, but you can get that in some of these trims. And then this one does not have a sunroof of any sort, which as you, as you know, if you've watched my videos, I'm not, that doesn't really do it for me, but a couple cup holders here. You've got the wireless phone charger here. Nice place to put your keys and whatnot. And then a good storage bin, throw your bubble gum or whatever up there. USB-A, USB-C connection. This one has on the back of the steering wheel. Um, it's got, we can turn this wheel around now and give you a, a better view of your, oh man, the sun is brutal right now. Um, your phone, phone controls over here, heated steering wheel control here, and your cruise control settings. On the dash, you can see that Currently, he's averaging 19.1 uh, miles per gallon, but you can customize this screen to a lot of different things. Um, but it's got a good range. On the highway, this thing is incredible with the fuel mileage, and uh, that is really where it shines there and with towing. But really nice cabin. It's really spacious. We'll get, we'll get a better look at the back and the passenger seat here for you, but... Let's hop out and walk around to the other side. All right, let's get in the, let's check out the passenger side. These do have driver and passenger, has the, the door lock and unlock feature on the front, but not on the rear. So coming into this, sorry, there's my bag in the way, but you got some good storage on the, on the door, a couple cup holder spots. It's fairly good depth. I think you probably could fit a, a decent water ball into that space. Um, coming in here, no power seat on the passenger side, um, which is, it's all right. Who needs their passenger to enjoy their ride, right? Um, glove box here. And then again, we've got right here, you got a little storage. You put it, I don't know what you put in there, map book, throw your phone in there, I don't know. But these have the cloth seats. They are really comfortable. Um, you know, they're, they're firm, but I've, I've not had any complaints about sitting on them and the bolstering is good for a bigger guy like myself. So that's been good, but good space, nice padded armrest. 
and uh, you can see there's two cup holders for the, the rear passengers and then otherwise not a whole lot to remark about over here but let's go to the back seat all right so the back seat again like I, like I mentioned man the, these half ton trucks they have so much space my uh, my 2012 f-250 is not this spacious but man I wish it was so someday these have manual seat lifters this is a factory installed under seat storage tray it's pretty nice handy to keep all your stuff from rolling around but these go up without having to grab a latch you've got the child seat anchors on the outboard seats a near flat floor but there is a little bit of a, a bump here in the middle and then in the center oh boy we got the sun it's angry you've got a USB A USB C port there and a vent for either side here there's no vents on the pillars or anything All right, let's get a look under the hood at the motor. Come around here. All right, so it's got struts, holds up. So this is your LZO three liter Duramax motor. 305 horsepower, 495 foot-pounds of torque, made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Again, it's geared in a 223 gearing ratio, but good motor, good strong power. Let's get a let's get a hear of what it sounds like to start it up. These diesels, it's so incredible. The, the rumble is so much more like a, a gas motor anymore, but it's got a really good sound to it. So yeah, that's your Duramax. All right, I want to take a look real quick at this sticker. GM does something that I think every manufacturer should do. They tell you what your tow ratings and everything are. Um, you can see you've got, for this, conventional trailer, 9,000 pounds. Um, for gooseneck, 7,900. And then your max tongue weighs 1,185. The max payload on this specific truck, 1,589 pounds. So, pretty cool. I think every manufacturer should do this. GM does, and it's really helpful. All right, so let's take this thing for a drive. Let's get out. Man, what a view. We got beautiful Garden of the Gods right in front of us. What a wonderful thing to have in our backyard. Um, all right. So I got the seat all adjusted for me. Let's get out on the road and see what it's like to drive this Silverado. First impressions is, is a comfy truck, right? I mean, seating position, I like sitting up high. You sit up high in this truck. That diesel doesn't have two. You can hear that it's a diesel, but it's not like the diesels of old. It's just like any other diesel these days where the roar is not too pronounced as you're driving. It's got good noise isolation. drive here in front of right in front of Garden of the Gods and that torque I'm barely touching it and I can feel that torque kick in it has good acceleration nice smooth acceleration there's some tire noise I mean this has all-terrain tires on it so you expect that that would have some of that noise tire noise coming into the cabin but 
when, once you get going, it, it's not something that has ever bothered me when we've been driving around. Um, this truck is, we'll see if we can find the average fuel on here for us, um, but it shows that the best it ever got was 46.1 on this tank, but I don't know what that means. Alex, what does that mean? What is what are you what are you averaging on this thing? So, in the city, I average about 23 miles to the gallon. That 46.1 is uh, how much I've the best mileage I've gotten in a 25 mile range. Okay, so I see. Like coming down from the mountains. I see. Um, what do you what what would you say you average on the highway? Um, highway speeds here in Colorado are. 75 i get about probably 24 miles to the gallon going that fast it's pretty good i mean you figure you know the 6.2 liter that comes in this it doesn't get that i think it probably averages in the mid-teens on the average between city and highway and that really is that's what the benefit of the diesel is is you get such good fuel mileage um you know, you can have all the discussions about maintenance and um, cost of diesel these, day, these days has been higher than gasoline, but how that works out over time, maybe you have an, some insight on that, Alex, but um, really, if we're just talking getting fuel mileage in a day-to-day -day experience in the city and on the highway, you're definitely going to get better mileage in this truck than you will in a gas counterpart in the 5.3 or the 6.2 that you can get in this truck. And I think it actually has a four cylinder turbocharged 2.7 liter engine you can get in the Silverado now. But this Duramax diesel, it's been very popular. It's been interesting because GM in their, the Silverado and the Sierra, they've really doubled down on this motor. I feel like they're rolling it out to the to other vehicles, the Suburban and the Tahoe are gonna start getting this in 2025. They'll get this motor. They can currently get the uh, LM2 diesel, Duramax diesel, which this LZO had a few tweaks, gave it a little bit more power, made it a little bit better for, uh, I think, for durability and longevity, but um, they put that LM2 motor in the, in the Tahoes and the Suburbans before, but this LZ, LZO is going to come in to those vehicles. So GM is expanding its lineup with this, whereas Ford, they got rid of their baby power stroke. Ram, they've had so many problems with the Eco Diesel over the years, it's come and gone. Um, but this baby Duramax, this three liter Duramax has stuck around and it's been a really good motor for GM. It, this truck is a, it's just a good drive. This is, you could use this as a daily driver. This is way more comfortable than my Super Duty truck. That thing bangs you around a little bit. I mean, it's an older truck. The newer Super Duties are much nicer to ride in than my truck, but this is a nice truck. It's comfy. I, I think, um, you know, you and Morgan, you guys drive this all the time. You guys pretty happy with your purchase? Oh, yeah, we definitely our purchase and uh, probably the best purchase of a vehicle you've ever made. Yeah. And you bought this, when did you buy this vehicle? So almost a year ago now, February of 2023. Okay. Have you had any maintenance issues or anything you've had to take it back to the dealer for? No, currently uh, no maintenance issues. Get the oil changed every 7,500 miles for the manufacturer recommendation. Okay. Well, that's good. I, I have not heard of a lot of problems, especially with the, the LZO motor. I know they had a few things with some things that some of the other YouTube channels have talked about with um, eating up the, diesel, uh, the oil, burning through some oil. You haven't had any of those experiences where nope. you felt like you've had to add oil? No, definitely no issues with that. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Hopefully they've, they've worked out some of the things that were causing some of those issues and um, we like to hear that people are having easy experiences. Um, do you like the, the changes to the infotainment center? I mean, oh, yeah. how, how do you not like this 
massive screen to be able to, uh, you're gonna have to, yeah. It, we have the cameras following me, um, but um, this massive screen, it's easy to see when you're driving. Um, there are a lot of reflections. Do you find that the reflections cause you issues when you're driving or it's pretty? No, I've never had an issue with okay. the screen and the reflections. Okay, well that's good. Um, let's get in this other lane. Try not to wreck this truck for you, huh? Get some maintenance issues for you? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah I think I think Morgan would be very displeased with me. Um, and she, I'm more scared of her than you for sure. But um, if we hit the maps on, it's got beautiful Google Maps, and we showed that a, a little bit as well. But man, it's just the changes they made to this truck have been really positive. Good acceleration, really comfy ride. So let's get this truck back. We'll talk a little bit more about our experience, but um, we'll show you a little bit of our drive and go from there. So thank you for joining us on this drive. All right, so Alex and I were talking, one of the things he mentioned about, as you can see, if you look out over this hood, the aesthetic, the bump that you have on, on the hood is a little bit obtrusive to your view. It's not, it's not anything that makes it unsafe or anything, but Alex was telling me that one of the things that really um, was difficult when they first got this was the reflections off of that, off the hood. So they added a matte PPF to help tone down some of those reflections. And I could see that, I can see how that would be um, difficult to drive with if you're getting reflections off there they're already in your field of view and if you're getting a lot of sun glare off of that I could see that being a difficult thing to drive around town with get on the highway here so we'll see what the acceleration's like oh man really good torque this vehicle in front of us does not have the same desire to check their acceleration onto the highway it's probably good there's a cop there but when you when you hit the accelerator there's very little delay you get really good acceleration nice torque Let's see what the noise on the tires is at highway speeds. I mean, there's some, you can definitely hear some of the road noise, some of the other vehicles, their noise coming into the cabin. But you can still have a conversation. Like it's still very manageable um, on a road trip. Do you find, Alex, do you find that on a road trip that the noise is bothersome at all? No, not at all. We're taking it halfway across the country. Yeah, I bet this seems like it'd be very nice to ride in. You know, we're not talking, you know, luxury vehicle levels of noise reduction in this thing, but certainly it is very doable, very drivable, and uh, this would be an enjoyable drive. So, yeah. That was a good, I think does well on the highway acceleration, getting on, getting in up to speed and then driving on down the highway, so.
All right, so let's go. Alex, why don't you show me, talk me through this. We talked a little bit about this infotainment, but tell me some of the features that you use on a regular basis and how everyday use, how you would use this. So obviously we're on the maps right now. This is Google map powered, right? Yeah. So this is not through Apple CarPlay, which this has wireless Apple CarPlay yes, it does. and Android Auto. Um, is that laggy? You feel like that is pretty smooth, quick and responsive? Oh, it's super, super smooth. Okay. Um, I'm more of an Apple guy myself and I like the Apple CarPlay, but it does have the built-in Google Maps. Um, you do need a, a acquire the cell service through Chevy to activate this map. So this, um, this is a, this is a subscription based mapping system, but this, you don't have this subscription, right? I don't. It's so, so it kind of works sometimes and then other times. Yeah, it, I think more for the search features, it requires a subscription. Okay. So if you were to use like Google search and stuff, you couldn't just voice into there and it wouldn't be able to find it. But yeah. I would assume that if you're looking for like a fuel station or restaurants, does it do that for you without the subscription or do you have to pay for that? You know, I'm not sure on that because, like I said, I use my Apple CarPlay. Let's see. Let's pipe it in. Let's see if you can uh, search for a restaurant or something real quick while I'm driving. Let's hit the coffee button. Let's see what it does. It does not look like it's going to bring them up. That Oh, no, it did. Oh. So it brought some up. It says offline but it says response. these are offline, so these must be built into the into the map, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so you got you have some things that you can find. Um, fuel, I would hope. I mean, it'd be nice if the fuel was at least free. I mean, get to somewhere and get fuel. But again, like you said, you have Apple CarPlay that you can you can find all those things. So again, offline re results shown here we don't have this subscription so that's okay um you said you can pull this up so this is where you can go through some new music um and a, you can put a clock up there or you can do the full screen map which is nice um yeah i mean it's really responsive very snappy um i haven't had any problems with it feeling like it's lagging or kind of having a mental breakdown when I'm asking to do things pretty responsive so that's that's what you want out of something that's running a screen that big right yeah. I mentioned that I really like these these knobs are easy to get to for your uh, HVAC controls so you can get those while you're driving I like where this trailer brake controller is at you can access that real easy here you know GM for a long time had them over here on the left side of you which for me I'm all the vehicles I've owned have had it over here on the right and so it's nice that they they moved the trailer bay controller over here to the right because I think that's where a lot of people are conditioned to do that I think the GM Sierra if I remember has it actually in this little opening here which I'm wondering I'm curious how that feels when you're driving if that's kind of an awkward place to reach down to but right here is really it's a really nice place to grab. We're going to go up here to the turn. Yeah, very good screen. I like, I love the driver screen, the information screen for the driver. It's bright, it's clear, it, it's usable information. Some of them it's like they put so much stuff up there that doesn't pertain to what you need and it's not customizable, but what's up here? Is there a lot of, are there a lot of customizations you can make here, Alex? There are actually, yeah, you can just about customize the, the whole screen. Yeah, because there's a lot of good information there. And when you're towing, does it, do you have towing? Have you towed with this truck? I have. Okay, so does it have uh, towing screens and give you really good towing information up there on your screen or how does that work? Yep, so when, when you're in a tow mode, it actually brings up, um, changes the screen just slightly, brings up the, transmission temperature when you're towing as well um, oh interesting the screen layout that I have I have it's a 
the most information that you can put on the screen, so you're not really um, being shortchanged with anything. And like I said, when you put it in tow haul mode, the transmission temperature does come up. Like it rises or it gives it a buffer no, of what it, it can no, go I'm to? The actual readouts for the transmission temperature pops Oh, up I see. It doesn't change the calibration. It, it pops it up for you to view? Correct. Oh, that's pretty handy. Yeah, because when you're towing, that is definitely one of the biggest things you want to be aware of is how hot your transmission's getting when you're towing up hills. You know, we're here in Colorado Springs, so everywhere we go to the west is hills. And when we tow, when my family and I, we go camping, when we tow up there in the mountains, um, if you don't have the right transmission temperature controller um, in your truck to cool it, you can overheat really easy and you see a lot of vehicles that do overheat a lot of newer vehicles not so much they do really good at at maintaining the temperatures on the transmission but that's really cool i like that they pull that up for you any other things that come up with different modes does this have drive modes so uh they you can do the manual um shifting it does have paddle shifters okay so you can um, do the gear select back here yep okay so, downshift or upshift manually you can do that and then you've got other controls i can feel back here what are those for um the one on the right is the volume button okay and the left is to change to the next radio station or next song okay um, that's kind of nice yeah, handy this, this does uh this 3.0 um duramax does have an uh, engine brake as well which activates when you put it into tow haul mode okay so you don't have that around town but it activates in tow haul mode Correct. only. Yeah. Can you activate it manually? You cannot. Okay. So just tow haul mode, you get a trailer brake or a exhaust brake. Is that what? Exhaust brake. How does it pull? Is it, it grab really hard or is it, how do you feel it when you're towing? How do you feel it grabs? No, it's, it's, it's not um, anything significant. Okay. But you could definitely tell that it helps out. All right. Yeah, that's a nice feature because I know a lot of these non-Super Duty diesel trucks that have been coming out lately, I think that's a unique feature to the GM Duramax is that ability to have an exhaust brake. Um, so that's nice that they put that on there. Does it have drive modes like sport? So it has an off-road mode. Off-road mode only? Yep. This model over on your left side, there's a... Over, on, over here in this mode with the trailer? Yep. Okay, so we saw that where the trailer controls are. You can go into uh, off-road. And then this has this one comes with four-wheel drive auto um, where it'll help decide for you whether you should be in four-wheel drive when you're driving, like in ice and stuff, right? Yeah, if the back, uh, back wheel starts slipping, it'll activate the front wheels. How do you feel that works? Is it clunky? Is it? Can you feel when it kicks in? No, not at all. It's very smooth. So you don't hear it, you don't feel it, you just feel that you've got traction now yeah. and, it, and it gives you that added needed traction. Yeah, it gives you a little, little peace of mind whether you're, uh, you're in between, whether you should have four-wheel drive or not. That's cool. That's a cool feature. I know that I think that's pretty something that is getting to be more common on newer trucks, especially half-ton trucks are starting to have more of that. Um, some of them still require you to, to go up a, in a trim to be able to get that, but I think that's a pretty handy uh, feature to have is that auto four-wheel drive. Yeah. So especially where we, we live here in Colorado with snow and uh, it's a handy feature. So this is a turbocharged motor. Does really good at altitude for you? Oh, it does great. Okay, yeah, so. I haven't, I haven't noticed uh turbo lag or lag in power going up to the mountains. So that's one of the biggest features with a turbo versus a uh, direct and jet, you know, just a non-turbocharged motor um, is at altitude up here. You definitely, you have power loss in a, a non-turbocharged vehicle. So um, some of these super duty trucks are like in this truck specifically, you would have the 5.3 and the 6.2, which are not turbocharged. And you do find, you will find that there's a 
power di diminishment when you're driving in the mountains and at altitude. Um, and that really, I mean, these have so much power now, you, you really find that more when you're towing, I think, right? I mean, around town, you don't notice that, but it's when you need that power when you're towing that you can tell you're at altitude. So it's nice, glad, glad that this is a turbocharged diesel and gives that, helps with the altitude. I'm happy. I, I really do like this truck. It's a, it's a comfortable ride. Uh, I think I'm just going to take it home. I'll just keep it for myself. We'll leave you my truck and uh, we'll yeah, do a that'll, clean that'll, swap. Yeah. That'll cost you. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, this is a good truck. I think, I think if you're in the market for a half ton truck, you've got to, you've got to check out this diesel motor. GM should be on your list. And I know a lot of a lot of people they they side in the camp of the V8 for towing, you know, the 6.2 liter has has a lot more horsepower and similar torque, but the torque at low end and keeping the RPMs low on this uh, Duramax, I think I think it's worth looking at and and shopping it before you make a decision because it's a smooth ride, it's a good towing uh, motor, and you get that power, you get that torque at lower RPM, which is nice um, when you're towing as well to get that power earlier versus having to wait for it to get up into the four and 5,000 RPMs on some of these trucks, so yeah. All right, so let's just do a, a quick wrap up on this 2023 Chevy Silverado with the Duramax. I really enjoyed driving this thing. Uh, thank you to my friend Alex and Morgan. Uh, they let me borrow their truck and, and gave us some pointers of what it's like to own this truck day to day. Um, if you're looking for a truck in the half ton market, check out this half ton from Chevy. Trail Boss is a really nice looking vehicle. Um, I don't know if you can get this color. I think we were looking and it said that for 2023, you couldn't order it anymore. Um, I'm unsure though if you'll be able to get it in 2024 when you if you order this truck from the factory. But there you go, 2023 Silverado Duramax. This has been Preston with Press and Go. Uh, please like, subscribe, come back and visit us again. Help help me build this channel up and uh, agency go apps. Bye.